Niche markets and value added. Unit 10. At this point, you're probably getting tired of talking about markets and, and hearing me harp on all the possibilities and, and the decision making that you have to make to decide to buy your product. But again, we're going to look at a couple different things as far as marketing uh, going today. That's going today. And as a review, the definition we're using for market is the location for buyers and sellers to come together. And we're going to look at a couple of specialty um, marketing opportunities today. And the niche market is a product that meets the needs for a very small, specific market. Uh, I have a friend that's growing hops on his small farm. And so he has the marketing potential of small breweries that want to use his hops to make beer. Well, just think about the area where you're at. We're at least 40 miles from any brewery that uh, would be interested in buying buying his product. So he's, de he's developing a product that's very specific and has uh, potentially very few buyers. But um, he's working with a couple guys in Chicago, and I think he has all the hops sold that he can grow this year to a, to a brewery in Chicago. So a niche market is a very specific market. And a value added is where you're doing some processing or changing your product to where you can increase the price. So if you are growing tomatoes and peppers and onions, and you could quickly turn those products into salsa. And now you're selling salsa instead of tomatoes and, and onions, and you're increasing the potential profit that you can bring in from your product. And we'll be talking about these as we go on today. So unit 10, hang in there. So from the consumer, the consumer perception is you have to convince the consumer that the product that you're selling is better or different from the competition. And one example that I can give in just regular normal agriculture is certified Angus beef. When you go to a restaurant or even Hardee's and McDonald's are using certified Angus beef as a selling tool where they are saying their product is better because they're using certified Angus beef. And if you ask a beef producer, what that means is the animal had black, uh, black, black hair and skin. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're Angus, but that's kind of what certified Angus beef has turned into. So your product is better than, the con than, the con than your competition. So that allows you to ask for a higher price and receive more profit and so wine's a good example you're not selling grapes you're taking your grapes and turning them into wine but it must be good wine and I think that's the that's the key as you just because you can make wine doesn't mean that it's a good quality product and so you've got to convince the consumer that your product is better than the competition some advantages, uh, some advantages to a niche market. Um, it allows you to utilize small parcels of land. Again, where the land is a resource, and if you can find a one or two acre small parcel, it's pretty easy to um, produce a large amount of product. We can improve the use of local economy. We're improving the local economy by utilizing labor and whether we're processing or we're having a niche product, we can hire more labor. So if you're making salsa, it's going to take more labor than just raising tomatoes. And it can involve the family members. And one of my favorite places to visit is the Rop Dairy in Bloomington, Illinois. They have a small Jersey dairy and they were struggling along as a as a dairy and they had a daughter that wanted to come back into the farming operation with their husband and the dairy wasn't large enough on its own so they developed a business plan to take the milk from their cows and make that into cheese so they have an on-farm cheese factory that they're utilizing the milk from the from the dairy and that allowed them to get a premium price for their milk allowed more family members to be involved in their business and they, it's a very good cheese you I encourage you to look for that it's in several 
local grocery store and retailers in, in central Illinois area and they're always willing to give tours on the farm and they're also one of the places that allow the school tours that we had kind of talked about agritourism they're getting school children out to the farm and so they have a niche market instead of selling milk they're selling cheese and so there is some disadvantages I think you have to um, be prepared to look at your situation and see if a niche market is is possible or value added it takes more labor that that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing uh, as far as your labor resource needs and the startup cost um, if you're buying a bunch of processing equipment and it's stainless steel and the startup cost is going to be more expensive it takes some another level of management um, I can grow a good grape that doesn't necessarily mean that I can grow that I can make a good wine so the management style is greater and it may take several years to develop your market and I, I see that as slowly building up uh, to get the market that you need and the location is important um, I see some golf courses that are that are off the beaten path and they have a hard time getting a large clientele to come play at the golf course just because of their location Some examples of value added, uh, salsa, uh, dried bean mix, um, something we, we do here at the, at the college. Some beef jerky, so taking your beef and turning it into beef jerky allows you to charge uh, $15 to $20 a pound for the product. Pickled garlic, the on-farm dinners we've talked about in the past, and there's a lot of opportunity for adding value to your product. And as I use an example, uh, if you have an apple farm, how can you add value to your product? So you have an apple farm, one option would be you pick. That would be an example of when the product would be probably the cheapest for the consumers, but they're providing some of the labor. How can the farmer add value? He can pick and grade the apples and sell picked and graded apples. So he's getting a higher price for some of his his apples because he's taken the time to do some quality control. Then we can make cider and I think one thing we have to realize in cider some of the apples that didn't make great are probably going into the cider but again more processing equals a higher return on the product. And then if you want to add more value then we have apple pie. Who doesn't love apple pie? So. We've added another layer of processing. Now we're making a crust and baking the, baking the apples into a pie. We're charging a higher price. And then we get a homemade ice cream maker and we're, now we're having apple pie with homemade ice cream. So the prices went up at each step. The amount of labors went up, but it allows us to do some, generate some more profit. And, and so one of the notes I make here is that some of the labor you can provide at a later date. So Potentially you could freeze some of the apples or you could can some of the apples into a into a apple pie mix and then make your pies in the future or in the winter when you may have more of a labor uh, force to work. You know, at, at harvest time we need a lot of labor. But in January not a lot of labor for the apple farm. And then creating a brand. I talked about certified Angus beef already. Um, what is the brand that you want on your product? You know, locally grown is a brand that's pretty generic but it and you know what defines local but that still you're saying my product is locally grown is it organic organic allows you to charge a premium as well it takes more management but it allows you to provide a premium for your product Missouri River Valley uh, Mason County watermelons in our area everybody knows what a Mason County melon means it's it's grown in Mesa County in the sand and sweet and but seasonal so can you create a, a brand for for your product and specialty products um, allows you to be more diversified and creates a whole different marketing chain for your product and, and you have to look around there's a little local flower shop in town and they're selling winery from a from a local um, from a local vineyard here in um, 
central Illinois. So where can you sell that specialty product? Is Do you have a market? Is there a cooperative grocery store? Where can you place your product uh, as far as a specialty product? We, we've been talking about the grape wine industry and um, it's a perennial crop, five years to full production, a lot of equipment to make wine is going to be a very expensive startup cost and a large labor force both at harvest and at pruning and it takes a while to develop a market so if you're how if I'm um, making a guess at profitability I'm gonna guess 10 years out at least before your winery is going to generate um, a profit just to pay for all the startup equipment is it, it just takes a long time to generate your money back so as we summarize the, the niche and specialty products just keep in mind that the more processing requires more labor but also allows you to bring in a greater income thanks